Welcome to the Soul Suite, starring Marcus Noel and the beautiful Miss Catalina. Now here's your host, Marcus Noel. Good evening. This is Marcus Noel with the Soul Suite with a public service announcement. No, you didn't dream 2020. It actually happened. And yes, you still have to look down to make sure you're standing on a social distancing marker. And God forbid you stand on someone else's marker or in the line moves and you're not paying attention. Yes, that happens. Has it happened to you? It's like kindergarten all over again. Um, sir, you're on my color-coded social distancing marker. Mine's the red one. Yours the blue one. Step back 12 feet. Or what about when there are no spots? Because now we get in line and the first thing we do is look down. There's a person at the front of the line, they move. You count one, two, three, four, five, six. I think it's okay. And you take a step. All of a sudden, the person in front of you gets all pissed off and tears around and looks at you with their mask on. Gives you this ugly look. Now there's one plus about COVID. Less talking when you're out. You walk past someone after six months and you have a mask on. We realize we can't see each other's smiles. So we morphed into a head tilt, smiling with our eyes. We completely forgotten that masks just cover our mouths. They don't stop our mouths from working. And it's like, we're all walking around, like we're twitching, just saying hi. I'll say this COVID has made it a lot harder to order food. It's like ordering food at Alberto's. You're wearing a mask, plexiglass, she's wearing a mask. Can I get an order of carne asada fries? She's like, do our tortillas rice? You're like, no. Carney size of fries. She's like, I can't hear you. Then you lean up to the glass, you pull your mask down, and she gives you, you know, the stare from earlier. How do you feel about stay at home orders? That's a trip, right? But they're saying we're having more sex during COVID. I don't know if I want to be single during COVID. Man, it's too much work. Remember when you could swipe right and go handle your business? Nope, not anymore. Hello, baby. How you doing? <laughs> Where you been? You been out today? Don't lie. You wearing that mask, that sexy pink M95 I sent you? Oh yeah, that's good, baby, that's good. Hey, what's your temperature been running at today? <laughs> Under 100 all day, damn girl, that's got me all hot and bothered. I'm on my way right now. But wait, baby, you know what I'ma bring? I'm bringing some antibacterial gel with Oh, we gonna get nasty tonight, girl. <laughs> What the hell is that? Who's working from home now? And drinking by 10. We find a big sports cup that we've got in the house. The dark one, you know, the one that you can't see through. You're on a Zoom call, sitting in your best button up and some draws. Remember in the beginning, it was fun. You thought you had to get dressed up. Now you're over it. Kids see you in the morning. Dad, you're going to wear some pants today. Boy, don't ask me silly questions. You ain't wearing no pants today. <laughs> or that Starbucks souvenir cup. You're drinking straight vodka at 10 in the morning at the production meeting. You turn that Starbucks logo to the camera so they think you're drinking coffee. <laughs> but then your face gives it away. <sighs> your coworker says, Sally, you made a face. Your coffee too hot? Sally's like, <sighs> oh yeah, it burns going down. Oh, oh, oh. So the Soul Suite is back. Yes, finally. <laughs> it's nice to be back in, on um, air. It is. Yes, it's, it's great. It's a little different than radio this time. Now all you guys out there get to see our faces a lot more because we're on a different type of platform. Yeah, still we're on Tune Radio, but <laughs> uh, a different type of platform. <laughs> yeah. It's nice to be back. You guys are going to see us a lot more as mm -hmm. visually, and then we're going to have the same type of topics, the same type of things. It's nice to connect people. We like yeah. to be the bridge to the entertainment industry. Right. Meaning that if you're not the best at this moment, we'll help you work towards getting the best well, and making sure that. Well, you know, you think you're the best, but then right. when you see the best, it sure. kind of knocks you down a little that's bit. True. So some of the things that's been happening, uh, what have you been up to during this time of, <laughs> of being Well, off? not a whole lot. I didn't get to work for a while. Mm. Then I got to work for a little while. Then I didn't get to work for a while. So it's been, you know, like a, a roller coaster. It's In been... the state of California, there's a tier system. And yeah. the tier system with the COVID system, it's been purple tier, red tier, things like that. So in this tier, we're in a purple tier right now. So a lot of things got shut down. Right. And, you know, you can't really do anything. You resort to trying to figure some fun things out to do 
uh, on your own at home. I mean, <laughs> we've been doing a lot of walking. We've been doing a lot of watching movies and TV and. Have you found yourself watching a lot of TV? Especially uh, Bridgerton with that hot guy. What's his name? Bridgerton. Oh my God. Oh my God. All the ladies are going crazy I over know. this guy. It, do you really feel like he's that good looking guy? He is. He's like perfect. Like you. <laughs> Whatever. I don't know if that's going to work, but nice words. Thanks for the kind words. <laughs> but yeah, it, it, but the only bad thing about that show to me yeah. is that they've only filmed one season. Well, they're starting the next one. It doesn't make sure. a difference. When you binge watch TV, yeah. you binge watch it to go through all six shows at one or six seasons at right. one time. When you get pissed off at yourself because you sat on the couch all day <laughs> for like two days straight, and you didn't just change your clothes, just didn't eat. do nothing, you got crumbs all over yourself, just eat and eat and eat and watch. But that's the benefit about it. I love it. You know why? why? Because I don't need to wait the next week for the next show. Okay. That's what I love. I love yeah. that. What about well, you? Well, I tore through that season pretty quick. Yeah. That was really good. <laughs> I don't know about everybody else, but that was amazing. I think a lot of people enjoyed yeah. that. And if you notice the subtle songs that yes. they have inside of there, they're more they're, they're more modern, modern songs, songs, but they're played with a violin, the yes. cellos, and all that type of stuff. Right. And you're like sitting there listening. Do I hear that? Am I listening to that right? <laughs> Are they really playing that in there? And it's modern, it's but, modern. It, but with the period clothing and... How do you like the language? I like it. You thought it was good? Oh yeah. I've always loved that stuff. Well, I've, read, I've read the books and... I think most women like that accent. Yes. I mean, I couldn't do the it's accent. so sexy. I mean, I sound... Uh, how, how's it go? Hello, darling. I was doing... I sound like I'm from South Africa. <laughs> you should take classes in, in dialects. That would be good for That's you. a good idea, but unless you're trying to impress somebody mm -hmm. and try to do a different language, I don't right. really see the necessity for it. This week on The Soul Suite with Marcus Noel and the gorgeous, beautiful Miss Catalina, we have award-winning director Doug Harris and artist Jay David. And subscribe to us on YouTube and Facebook at World Tuned Radio. Are pretty much the files that the camera creates, okay? Because the mirrorless camera does not shoot the same codex as the cinema camera. We are not the same. I do without the fame. I put on sport mode and I stay up in my lane. The rocks all on my name. The rain don't win it came. Now I see a few zeros every time I sign my name. Hard to call it cause I'm everywhere you can't be. Plus I'm from the valley, so I'm cool with all the OGs. Reason you ain't heard of me, cause you ain't spending no bread with me. I play it and then I make my moves accordingly. I open up the door and then I hold it coming. Alright, so we have a great guest for you guys today. I just want to introduce you with over 20 documentary credits, Berkeley, California native has created a powerful body of original work featuring community political and educational leaders and well, as well as civil rights, luminaries, sports icons, and notable entertainment figures. I give you guys the award-winning Doug Harris. So how you doing today, Doug? Oh, I'm doing great. <laughs> Thank you very much for taking the time to spend with us today. Um, you're a busy man. You're a busy man. You got a lot of things going on. Yeah, despite this COVID pandemic, I'm uh, managing to keep myself busy. <laughs> 
That's good. I mean, let's talk about some of your, your things that you've done in the past. I mean, the one thing that comes out to me the most is uh, the the baseball story. Out. Out. Uh, can you tell us a little about that? Yeah, well, Out is the story about a, a friend of mine. He was actually my childhood hero growing up here in Berkeley. His name was Glenn Burke. And uh, th this, this documentary, Out, was the first uh, documentary about uh, the, the first professional baseball that, that, that came out as being openly gay. And it's, it's basically a groundbreaking documentary film because no one else has really done a story about that subject matter in it being a major uh, sports figure in American sports. And the, and, and, and the documentary took place back in the late, uh, mid to late 1970s. And it's, and it's about Glenn Burke, who's a former Los Angeles Dodger and Oakland A's uh, professional baseball outfielder whose career was uh, cut short because of his uh, sexual preference back in those days. And um, Major League Baseball, or any sport for that matter, wasn't ready for you know having gay athletes competing at the professional level. So you getting into filmmaking, and that sounds uh, from Berkeley. I mean, Berkeley's a very diverse school, and uh, it allows people who go to Berkeley there I, I, I say they're a little different than the regular person out in 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 California or in the United States because you're open to so many different ideas. Berkeley gives you so many phases of life that other people have not ever seen. Can you tell us a little bit about your experience at Berkeley? Well, you know, I grew up here in Berkeley, and uh, you know, big memories that I have of, of growing up was. Uh, during the uh, the struggles of, of of the protest at UC Berkeley, I can recall as a kid uh, watching the National Guard troops uh, travel in motorcade through my neighborhood up to the university in the Telegraph Avenue area for what I thought back then was an actual war that was happening in our city. Because when you watch the national news on television as a kid during that time period, you see the Vietnam War, right? But then when they switch over to the local news, you know, your perception as a kid is that there's a war going on right here in your city. And, you know, you smell the tear gas, you can't go out uh, for, for uh, activities, you know, at your elementary and junior high school because of the tear gas all over the city. And so it was things like that that I remember uh, about those turbulent 1960s in Berkeley. But as I got older, I started to learn more about what that was all about. And so, you know, Ber Berkeley is a, definitely a, a unique type of place. <laughs> Do you feel that as an African-American man, um, that influenced you into your art, into your style of, of, of filmmaking? I, I wouldn't say that so much in is that uh, the documentary films that, that I've been that I've been producing over the years uh, have really acknowledged and celebrated the contributions of a lot of uh, people that I knew personally and, and people that, that really uh, made significant impacts who came out of Berkeley came out of, you know, my community here in Berkeley. And so, you know, when we talk about that, Glenn Burke is, you know, a perfect example of a person that, that grew up here in Berkeley and went on to make an impact, make a statement, so to speak, a social statement in professional sports. And then, you know, uh, there there's a gentleman named Don Barksdale who drafted me to the Golden State Warriors uh, when I came out of college in 1983. And, you know, as I got to become friends with him, I learned that he was the first consensus All-American, Black All-American in college basketball back in 1947. He was in 1948, the next year, he was the first Black to play on an Olympic, uh, U U.S. Olympic basketball team and win a gold medal. 
Uh, he was the first NBA All-Star, the, the uh, black player to compete in an NBA All-Star game. And here this guy is, is a friend of mine, you know, who helped me uh, get my career started in professional basketball. And when I learned his story, I was like, oh my God, this is a guy who they wouldn't allow to play at, at our high school, Berkeley High School, which he attended also. But back in the early 40s, he wasn't allowed to play at Berkeley High School because he was black in the, in the whole segregation thing that was going on here in Berkeley. And, and so it's stories like that. And then you have another story that I produced uh, about a gentleman named Byron Rumford, who was Northern California's first black assemblyman in the California legislature. I, I didn't know Byron Rumford, but uh, Byron Rumford's Fair Housing Act bill uh, allowed my mother to purchase a home in a in a white neighborhood here in Berkeley and had he not passed that legislation that opportunity wouldn't have been available to families like ours here in Berkeley and, and for people all over the country to move and, 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 and live in neighborhoods that were at one time under restrictive covenants all right so Let's get, let's get into your new project that we're talking about. And your new project is an Alton J. Patton III and Lyle Network Presents, Uziki, Washington, D.C.'s African Ancestral Sculptor, a Doug Harris film. Let, let's, let's get into that. Can you tell us a little, our, our, our watchers, our viewers, a little bit about that film? Well, that, that, that documentary project is basically uh, a family story. Uh, my son, Douglas Jr. and I, we, we took a cross country trip to Washington, D.C. to to do a, a very interesting story about my uncle, which is my mother's brother. And it, it, it was a documentary film that had so many different layers. It, it's really hard to describe. One, one would have to, you know, see this documentary to really truly understand the multiple layers that it that it has. There's, you know, the documentary covers education. The documentary covers history. The documentary covers art. It, 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 I mean, there's it, it, arts activism, community involvement. There's just so many different areas of of, of my uncle's life that we were able to document in, in in his story. And then, as as you pointed out, a big part of this story involves, you know. Uh, housing in the, in the DC area, Washington DC area, uh, uh, along with the, the 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 beginnings of the gentrification situation that took place in Washington DC when they built the metro uh, when they built the metro railway uh, in different parts of, of of the community that it was a signal that if if black people didn't own property that they were gonna have to leave because there was gonna be, you know, gentrif gentrification coming along in, in, the, in the Washington DC area. So that's just one, you know, one facet of this, this wonderful story. What I saw and what I enjoyed the most out of this story was Alan Uziki Nelson um, and his sculpting that he had, but he, you captured it to where you made us feel like that was our family member. That was the person in our family member who was, who met uh, uh, Dr. Cleveland uh, uh, Denard and was um, put things up for Thurgood Marshall and made these types of, um, of sculptures that brought you back to life. And it also made you feel very proud. His sculptures were a little different than others, which he used stained glass in his as well but it made it so that you felt in this documentary that this is my family member. I'm happy to be a part of this because it was a really good thing. You, you, you brought that to us. Well, you know, uh, Uziki, one of, his, one of his biggest driving forces is to get, you know, African-American, Black, however you may want to describe us as a people, to, to get our young people in particular to get an understanding in, that we come from greatness and that, you know, our history didn't start with slavery and that, you know, we need to acknowledge these great figures 
uh, throughout history that made an impact for our people. And, you know, I think that he went out and, and, and erected these monumental, I mean, huge sculptures. And he had to really work hard to find a creative way to get his artwork uh, put put out publicly uh, so that he can, so that he, he could uh, have, have these, the, the sculptures seen. And so, you know, he had to be re very creative in, in his way of, of getting his art out there in, in Washington, D.C. So what he did was he adopted parks within the city, uh, 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 within Washington, D.C. And he erected his sculptures on his very own parks. And I thought that that was a real interesting concept and it, and it shows people that just because doors are shut one way, that we shouldn't just give up on our dreams and hopes. And Yuziki is a perfect example of someone who who did that as a means to get to put his art out there in front of the public eye. Well, tell everyone how they could see our uh, this film um, or be a part of this film um, as far as uh, the next steps uh, on your journey. Well, the Yuziki documentary will be shown uh, publicly on my website at www.dougharrismedia.com for the remainder of Black History Month. And then after, uh, after Black History Month, me and a group from Richmond, California, we're working to uh, make the documentary an interactive presentation because the film has so many different layers in different areas one will venture off into once they're viewing it. And the interactivity, we're gonna try something very creative and very outside of the box in terms of making Yuziki an interactive uh, uh, production, documentary production, to whereas the viewers can stop and, and, and click on different parts of the documentary they can take them into further information about uh, what's being presented in the film. And it's something that, that, that is very different. I have, as a documentary filmmaker, I haven't seen this type of uh, project uh, produced yet. And so I'm willing to, to uh, give it a shot and, and, and take this documentary to a whole nother level for, for the viewers, both for entertainment and as an educational tool in particular for our young people. Well, that sounds, that sounds great. And we'd love to have you on when that does come out. And I want to thank you so much, uh, Mr. Award-winning producer, director, Doug Harris, for being on the Soul of Sweet. Thank you so much for joining us today, sir. You're doing a great thing uh, for the community and for the world. Oh, thank you very much for having me. Hi, I'm Ryan. This is my car. Do you like it? Great. We'll get to that. Trust the process. You see, I've been going back and forth with myself, and I've decided it's for sale. sale. No, it is not. Yes, it is. See what I mean? I don't need it, but I want it. You're probably wondering what's wrong with it. I don't know. It cost me a lot to get it running, so hopefully nothing. All I'm asking is a cool 5K. I allow myself to tell you the details. I just wanna live forever. I just want my shit together. I just want my abs to show. I just wanna eat whatever. I just wanna hit the road. I just want the perfect weather. And look at this finish. All original. <sighs> Nothing says I love the US of A like lead paint, baby. Instincts going no, looking bad like a bat with an eye patch. All black through the woods with a backpack and a lit match. Spark one time, get the whole city looking like a dark set of orange when I burn it down. What it is, what it do, hope. And everybody looking at me while I got them all in my sights. Picking them off, taking them out, looking like daylight in the night. And I'm killing so many if they really wanna get involved. And everybody fall off in the elevator. Now I'm Bray Rice in this. It's like I'm rice and take a bite. It's nice and I have a nice time with it. By the time that it finds the way to the right side of him, not even a Heimlich can save him. I select the finger to you imbeciles. Tell me what's been getting into you. Envy will kill you. She said I'm a gentleman. I'll admit a lot of women set up on my Ottoman. I don't give a damn like an auto with no time 
kill, I've been feeling like the opposite of work. So work and I never been a purpose a thing to me. I just do what I love and it works for me. So I'm freaking every check, I put the money in the pushing me to be gonna to the finish and the kidding of a dope and everybody know I'm working in the sea. I do it differently, so only time will give me everything that I deserve my yeah. end. And we're back. Told you guys we have a great guest for you guys today. Someone close to my heart, dear and near. It's my brother. I know him as Jonathan David. You guys know him as Jay David. He has featured in so many different types of music and he's, you know, dabbling into something a little different we're gonna talk about today. How you doing, John? Doing good. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I appreciate it. So it's been uh, quite some time since you've been on a Soul Suite. Yeah, what's about, been new with you? That was about seven years. I came on and talked to you guys back that in 2013. Yeah, yep. <laughs> yep. in the studio. Yeah. The now everybody gets to see what you look like. Exactly. Huh? <laughs> that was a long time ago. Yeah. No, things have been really good. You know, um, since that time, definitely. I uh, had a family, you yes. know, so that's, that's a huge thing. Yes. Um, and, and just kind of been working on some different things. Haven't completely disappeared from the music scene, but, um, you know, uh, dipped and dabbed in some script writing and doing some soundtracks and things for movies and then still writing, producing music, definitely the passion and uh, doing some business ventures and things of that nature. But, um, but yeah, it's been good. It seems like he's just going all over the place. It's like nothing can hold you down. <laughs> hey, I, you, you got to keep it moving. You got to keep You're it moving. You're big talent. So, too. so yeah, for sure. So as you've been doing this seven years and uh, away from the soul suite, there's been a lot of things that's happened in the world. I mean, COVID has happened and that's a major thing. How has that affected you or your family? Anything like Man, that? Man, COVID's crazy. Like COVID's just, I, it's, it's, it doesn't even make sense to me, but but I get it. I, and of course, my heart goes out to everybody that's been you know affected, affected. by it. Um, but I don't think we're ever gonna get used to just this new way of life. We have a new normal. Yeah, and, and and I don't see it going away anytime soon. So you know, it's just you know you either have to adapt, um, and that's in you know business, that's in your ventures, whatever right. it is that you want to do, and and roll with it. And if not, you're gonna get left behind. It's sad, but it's true. It's a do, time to be creative right now. And Absolutely. that's what I was going to say. Absolutely. Do you feel like creativity has um, bubbled over in not only you, but a lot of different music, artists, movies, things like that? I mean, I think people are really zoning in on, on their talents right now. They're super um, just making things not just about, you know, silly things. I think things are more more serious. And, and you can see some of the, the talent that's out there right now. I mean, I was watching the, the Super Bowl. I'm sure you guys mm -hmm. are Super Bowl. And just watching the lineup from her doing the, uh, the America the Beautiful and then yeah. doing the, the national beautiful. anthem. And um, I mean, people are just really, really, you know, not letting this, this thing stop them. So well, people aren't performing as much. They're in the studio, they're creating. And Correct. And Jasmine that. Sullivan, also she the did. Uh, the, she tore. She brought her crazy. inner Whitney Houston to that. It was thing. crazy. I thought it, it was. Why'd you make you want to cry? I, <laughs> it was great. I thought the arrangement was amazing, yes. and yeah. um, being that it was a little bit of country, a little bit of R and B, yeah. um, they really made it work, and, and that's what it's all about right now. Just being creative, doing different things, um, you know, being an inventive, and just just yeah. you know, bringing your best. So speaking about the Super Bowl, I mean, one of the features in the Super Bowl and in the inauguration was Amanda Gorman. Um, she's a, a poet that defines a different level of poetry, I believe. I believe she's for the younger style of, of people growing up. Like Maya Angelou, she's like the grandmother. Yes. Yeah. Don't you, do you yeah. agree? No, definitely. And I think it was awesome to see her at uh, Biden's inauguration. Awesome to listen to what she did at the Super Bowl. Um, just giving um, accolades to the to the first responders and the different people that uh, she was um, talking about. But yeah, she's on another level. I mean, she's bright, she's amazing. Twenty year super, old, super super bright. I didn't realize yeah. she was so young I either. Know. But yeah, I mean, just she's just like amazing. a shining star. Right? Yes, yes. and graduated yes. and honors and just just Absolutely. amazing person to look up to. Sure. So, sure. what have you been up to? Uh, speaking of. I want to say poetry. Is that the right <laughs> word to use? You know, Can you tell us a little about what's with, been going on? With, with me. And what's up with this hat? What's, hey, what's the hat for? The, the hat is always, so I, and I thought you might ask about it, um, I, but I, it's always, since you've, you've known me and, and yes. since I know you, I, it's always the hat. It's just, 
I think I've turned it around a little bit. Um, if you guys remember, I always used to have the hat facing that way, covering the eyes yes. a little bit. But um, it's just me, I think, venturing out even more open, just just letting right. people see the eyes Your a little style. bit. And, and, you know, keeping the style good. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as the, the poetry thing, yeah, I've written a book. It's called The 508 Room. 508 Room. The 508 Room. So where did the name 508 Room come from? It's a little complicated, but I'll, I'll give you the quick 15, 20 second spill. Um, <laughs> it's basically, it was, I went through a long journey within this last two and a half, three years, just a lot of things going on and a lot of transitions and changes in my life, even going between music and movie stuff. Yeah. Um, but the 508 is actually just my number of how long it took for um, me to recognize that I was changing, for me to recognize that there were different things going on in my life. And it's not the it's not an actual room. It's the room that I needed to actually get to where I needed to get. Mm. So like everyone's number would be different. So right. yours could be the 208 room or the uh -huh. 408 right. room. Right. Mine was just 508 days of that's how long it took me to get to a place where I knew, you know, there was gonna be some change and transition in my life. So yeah. is it, so the 508 is basically not a, a, a bedroom, not a no. living room. No. It's the room and the space you need for change. For change. For it's it's for what, transformation. for transformation, perfect. So yes. so God dealt with me in that 508 days and, and it's, it's the room I needed to mm -hmm. get where I need to be. It's like we can't step up and get where we need to go sometimes by ourselves right. on our own. Mm -hmm. um, there has to be, you know, almost you have to almost die to yourself mm -hmm. and then be reborn yeah. into whatever it is to rebuild and, and to get where you got to get. And it, it took me a long time and but I'm, I'm super proud of it and it's really just a collection of everything I was feeling in that 508 days. I mean, it's raw. It, I go from everything from from life to you know family to um, sex to anything. It's it's anything because yeah. that's that's life. You know, I, I didn't want to short sell anything. So yeah, it just seems like I mean that to me that's a long time. Yeah. 508. Well, well, but I mean, yes. but at the same time, I've never I've never put a time limit on my journey because I don't know what that, that for me, it might be 1,280, <laughs> yes. I don't know. But or I six. mean, exactly. our 600. Exactly. So tell everybody what they can experience in the book, number 508, okay. and when it's gonna be out, and uh, maybe how they can be a part of that. Yeah, we're looking for a late summer release date of 2021, mm -hmm. so that's what we're trying to do here. Um, and the 508 room, it's, it's really, um, it's gonna be something where people can really make it their own experience. You don't read it from cover to, to end. You, oh, okay. you definitely can jump into it wherever you want um, because it's just this journey and you can kind of see that journey of change as it's going. I never thought it was going to be poetry or spoken word, but that's just what, what came out of me when, when I did it. So um, it's not something, um, I've always been a writer as you know, but it's not something I, I really was specifically into, but um, it just it just came out and it came out great and um, you know people ask me now are you gonna rap you rap no I'm not no. a rapper it's just it's just words that rhyme that that happen to be uh, po poetic and spoken word like so I know you are very good at describing certain situations and your words and putting people in that place so you have a gift and I I've heard some of the poems in 508. And I encourage you guys to check that out because I can guarantee it will change your life. It will bring you on a roller coaster ride. Yes. And a roller coaster ride that you may not be ready for yet, <laughs> but at the same time, you're gonna enjoy every pace. single portion <laughs> of it. So yeah. I thank you so much yes, for uh, coming in and sharing that. I know you're gonna perform for everybody, right? Yeah, I, I got maybe one or two that I brought that I, I can share, so okay. absolutely. That's good. Nice. It's yeah. going to be a great thing. Hey, you, thank guys you guys for having me. Check out it. Jay David in the 508 room uh, and his poetry book. Uh, is it, do we call it a poetry book? I mean, I just like calling it the 508 room. It's, okay. just, it's just the 508 room. The journey. The Everybody journey. check out the 508 yes. room by Jay David. Dear Devil, could it be that I have too much time on my hands? No, because time would require me to invest in this communication. Completely disregard the years of degradation. Your untimely calculation of misrepresentation and creative manipulation. For I don't invest in dialogue void of process, lacking premeditated dictation. 
So screw your fixation or failed plan of persuasion to try and convince me that this is even a real conversation. It's everything less. It's my aha moment. It's royalty separating from insignificant. It's your aha moment when you realize his grace makes me magnificent. Wait, there's more, you vile prince of deception who torments, kills, destroys, annoys, enjoys leading me into temptation. I regret to inform you that without hesitation, your counterfeit intimidation has just taken a much needed permanent vacation. Let me remind you again, this is not a conversation, so hold your tongue. I reserve the right and sold your reservation. It was bought by the blood of the lamb and paid for with a lifetime of salvation. Cancel your return plans like you cancel the light as you enter a room. You're on blast and life as you knew it in regards to me will never resume. Cause I'm standing on ideas, creations, notations, dreams much bigger than your plans with zero limitations. Inventions, connections, life-size closets with endless selections, stadiums full, prisons closer to empty. If he sends me, I'll go. Not my will, but his will in my backyard or the Serengeti. My illimitable imagination is what makes this non-conversation an extraordinary graduation, yet a very bad situation for the likes of a narcissistic self-absorbed violation of everything that is good and holy. You fell when you didn't notice me returning to my feet, restoring all things that you have stolen from me. No need to ever show up again, but I know you will. Because over the years you've lacked three very important skills, reading, writing, and arithmetic. In the last book of the holiest books ever conceived, unfortunately you failed to read. In the end you lose the battle and losers only succeed in judging those who really just need a touch from the Prince of Peace. The truth, the right, the only way. The same way you will never count it all joy cause we both know you're a liar. I have 666 reasons but how about one more? Winners write history, overcomers see their children become kings and queens. You perverted written words to not translate what they mean. So get your hands off my life, my promise, my future, my mind. Once again, this is not a conversation. It's finally just my time. Signed, Winner. Did you hear what she said? Did you know what? I heard. Man. Oh, no, he did. Where the really? street girl? Yes, she was working in the street. And you and everybody else listening. That's crazy. Hey, this is Nita B. Talks with Nita B. I'll be covering everything. Anything you wanted to know about, I got you. Let's talk about it on World Tuned Radio. What's good? You're tuned in to Yes Ma'am Radio on World Tuned Radio. It's your girl, Faux Deuce. This is GT, the big figure. It's your boy, Primo. Everybody's favorite cousin. It's your boy, D Truth, in the building. It's DJ R Son, aka Sonny Burns, the truth in the booth. We live, baby! Right now not now right now it's going down yeah Woo. you're now listening to auditory analysis with me sierra dominique where it's more than music This is Mama G. I have my PhD in parental household discipline. Whatever you have in your household, I probably raised it, taught it, loved it, spanked it, punished it, and definitely prayed over it. The West Coast Premier Podcast Network. Please forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. This is my quarantine confession. I had to change my trash can into my recycling bin because of COVID. I ordered $500 of Postmates and 99% of it was not food. I binge watched every season of Golden Girls on Hulu. During quarantine, I became the top 3% on Candy Crush. Got emotional and found myself strangely attracted to Blanche. I went a whole week without taking a shower and used a bottle and a half of Febreze on one pair of sweats. Thank you for watching The Soul Suite with Marcus Noel and the gorgeous, beautiful Miss Catalina. You know, everyone's going through a lot of things right now, especially with COVID. It's hard times. 
And we just want to say from Soul Suite, God bless you. We know you'll make it. It may not be COVID for you, it might be something different. But at the same time, I know you'll make it. We always make it through. And from us at the Soul Suite with Marcus Noel. Sweet dreams and soulful nights. Podcast Network.